Hello English learners and welcome back to another video. This is Level Up English. However, today I'm not in England. I am in Tirana, the capital of Albania. And I'm walking this afternoon. It's a very, very hot and sweaty afternoon. I'm walking around the Grand Park of Tirana and I am sweating buckets. It's incredibly hot today. So as I walk around this park, I want to share five idioms related to travel. So these are common everyday English idioms that you can use in conversation. You know, we use them all the time and I think they can be useful for you, but also relevant to what I'm doing as well. So it's a little bit you know, connected to where I am. So you might notice a few of the videos I've got upcoming over the next few weeks will be in different countries. And this is because I'm doing some traveling this year. One of the big reasons why is because Obviously during COVID and the pandemic, many of us couldn't do that. And I was beginning to get itchy feet because I love traveling. I was getting itchy feet. So this is our first idiom that we can learn today, this expression to get itchy feet. And I wanna explain what this means with some imagery for you to think about. So imagine the bottom of your feet are really, really itchy. What are you going to do in that situation? Probably you would move around quite a lot. You'd be kind of dancing on the floor, trying to keep your feet moving because they're itchy and uncomfortable. And this is exactly what this means. So it's basically someone who doesn't like to stay still and they want to keep traveling, keep moving, going from place to place. So very basically, if you have itchy feet, then you are someone who loves to travel and you're not really content being in one place for too long. So that is kind of one reason why I'm here because I had very itchy feet from being in rainy, cold England for too long. However, it would not be a true travel experience without something going wrong. And that has already happened to me. So for some reason, I don't know why, but I'm not able to withdraw any money from the ATM. So I can use my card when I pay for things, but I cannot use any cash. And that is quite difficult because it's kind of a cash-based society here. Like most people use cash, it's quite difficult. And honestly, I've tried to spend the last couple of days trying to sort this out and fix it, but I am at my wit's end and I don't know what to do next. So this is our next idiom today. And I suppose it's not necessarily about travel, but of course you can use it for travel. But I think the benefit of these idioms is that they can be used for any situation. You know, it doesn't have to be one specific topic. You can use it for anything. If you're at your wit's end, then you're kind of at your limit of your mental capacity. You don't know what to do next and you're maybe becoming a bit too stressed and you're not sure where to go from here. So I've been trying to sort out this money problem for a few days now, and I don't know what to do next. I'm at my wits end about it, and I'm, I'm pulling out my hair if I had any, right? So again, maybe you guys can let me know if there's something that you're at your wits end about, something that you really want to sort out, but it's kind of pushed you to the limit of your mental ability. So yeah, the main reason I came to this park today is just because the city is so busy. It's so crowded. I've been to quite a few places around the more kind of Eastern countries in Europe and around this area, the Balkan region. And I've never really been to anywhere quite like this city before. It's very hectic, very busy. And it kind of reminds me a bit of like Ho Chi Minh city in Vietnam, where like, you have to be so careful when you're crossing the street cars don't really respect the lights and things like that and of course it is very very noisy as well there's lots of music playing there's cars beeping their horns it's all the time it's constant so it's not so suitable to film videos there in the streets and i think you really do have to be aware of your surroundings because if i'm not totally switched on i might be hit by a car or something like that but i do have to be very careful because this is my first time in this park here and I was reading online that because it's quite big and there's so many little paths that go everywhere, you have to be really aware of where you are. You have to be careful not to lose your bearings. So this is the next expression, the next idiom I want to share today. To lose your bearings is when you kind of lose your sense of direction. You kind of forget which way is north or which way is back home. You don't remember where you are. I think it should be fairly easy for me as long as I just stick to the lake and I don't go off path. But yeah, if you end up going off the path, one of these side paths here, then you might end up losing your bearings. So let me know in the comments, how is your sense of direction? Do you need a map? 
when you go out in the city or in the countryside? Or do you have a good sense of direction? Do you ever lose your bearings when you go out exploring? Okay, now I want to mention an expression I spoke about in a previous video. So if you watched all my videos, this might be a good review. You might remember this one. But I want to talk about one reason why I really love traveling, because it's definitely not easy, um, especially the way I do it. I think it can be easy if you do it in a more relaxed, you know, specific way. But one thing I think I love about it is how it forces me out of my comfort zone, right? And it helps me come out of my shell a bit more. So this, it, this is the idiom here, to come out of your shell. And it's exactly as a tortoise would do. They're kind of hiding in their shell, hiding in their home, and they come out and they're confident and they explore the world. They're not kind of hiding away at home all the time. And I have spoken many, many times before about how I can be a bit more introverted, a bit more shy, perhaps. And I think one thing about travel is it kind of forces you to come out of your shell. You kind of have to interact with people a bit more. You have to leave your comfort zone. And the reason why that is good is because that is when you grow, that is when you improve, and that is when you see the biggest self-development, right? So I think that's what I really try to seek after and search for, even though it might be uncomfortable in the moment. So let me know in the comments, what was the last thing you did that helped you come out of your shell a little bit more and become more confident and less shy? I just realized I've been walking for ages and I'm not even halfway around the lake. It's much bigger than I expected. So I'm turning back now. I'm gonna go back the boring way, but I'll make sure it's interesting for you guys. I'll show you lots of clips uh, of the city and the surroundings while we're talking. So hopefully you get a good idea of the city uh, while you learn a bit of English as well. The final expression I would like to share today is a thirst for adventure. I definitely have this. Most of the time I have this thirst for adventure. This word thirst is, you know, the same as hunger, except for liquids, right? So when you're really thirsty, when you really want some water, you have a thirst. I want to quickly mention, because I know someone's going to comment this below, that I've mentioned in a previous video I don't always pronounce this TH as your textbook might say. And I think this is fairly common in uh, some English accents. For me, it's always been quite a challenge to pronounce that TH. So rather than pronouncing it a bit more like first, I tend to just be a bit lazy and say first with an F. So technically it's not right, but it is fairly common. I try not to do it in my videos, but sometimes it, you know, it's hard to kill that habit. But this word actually has many different uses and it kind of just means like a really deep desire for something, a really strong desire. So if you have a thirst for adventure, then that means you really love adventure. You have a strong desire to travel and experience new things and explore the world. But yeah, let me know in the comments one last time if you guys have a thirst for adventure or maybe you prefer to be sitting at home more relaxed and you know, not going out so much. But I think I will leave it there for today. So there are my five idioms that you can use for travel or maybe for general life. Again, it doesn't have to be for travel. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any more requests while I'm traveling for future videos, please let me know and I'll do my best to do that. But for now, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. If you're interested, you can check out the full lesson for this YouTube video where you can find live subtitles, worksheets, more detailed explanations, quizzes, and teacher feedback, and all of this around this video at Level Up English members. So if you're interested in that, you can click the link in the description or go to levelupenglish.school and go to the members page to sign up. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find the bonus worksheets helpful as well. Thank you for watching.